Hello, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block. Politics, perspectives, and players. From Attawapiskat to Makwasegwagan, you've heard the reports. We looked at our young people, you know, who are so desperate, and they feel so lost and unwanted that they take their own lives to stop their pain. We've seen the images and the pain of the loss of so many young Indigenous lives taken early by suicide. Suicide amongst Canada's Indigenous people is high. A recent report from Statistics Canada shows that the rate of suicide among Indigenous Canadians is three times the number of that of Canada's non-Indigenous people. Please, let's do something. Let's quit losing lives. We, should, we all love children. We should all try and save him. Indigenous young men and Indigenous boys are particularly overrepresented in the statistics of death by suicide. So why are so many of them dying so young? Joining me now to discuss this important issue is Senator Patrick Brazo. Senator, thank you for coming on the show. Good Sunday to you and thank you for having me. This is something you've had a very painful and personal experience with. You are a survivor. You had a suicide attempt. Can you tell us a little bit about what led to you feeling that way in your experience? Well, essentially, uh, you know, to make a long story short, I had, uh, I had a good upbringing. I had great parents. Uh, uh, you know, they taught me a lot of good principles and morals. But, uh, you know, when I lost, uh, when I lost my job uh, back in 2013, uh, you know, I basically, uh, uh, you know, I had no more money. I had no more self-esteem. My uh, my ego was uh, was shattered, and I took it very hard. Uh, and I not, never thought that uh, I would have even had contemplated uh, having thoughts of uh, committing suicide. But uh, but I did, and I hit rock bottom. And uh, luckily, uh, I I, uh, I didn't succeed. When you look at the suicide rates for Indigenous men, Indigenous boys, and Indigenous people writ large, I uh, just want to highlight some for our viewers, because it's pretty astounding. For First Nations people, it is three times higher rate than for non-Indigenous people. For Inuit people, it is nine times higher. For Métis, two times higher. It is highest among people between the ages of 15 and 24, and in particular, Indigenous men and Indigenous boys. What are the factors that are driving this tragic situation? Well, there are many factors, and uh, as a matter of fact, 75% uh, of suicides are committed by men. Uh, and so, after the experience, experiences that I uh, underwent and uh, what I went through, uh, you know, I went to rehab uh, several times, and I got to meet a lot of people who had uh, mental problems and addictions uh, issues uh, and whatnot. Um, and it's at that moment that uh, I had decided that I was going to try to do something uh, for these people. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was, uh, I was out in Edmonton talking to uh, young First Nations children last week, um, in between uh, grade 7 and 11. And, um, you know, it, it went well, and I, I shared my story, and I shared how uh, there can be hope, uh, regardless of what the problems that people may uh, go through. Um, and just as a side note, um, uh, two of the educators, uh, after I, ca I came back from Edmonton last week, uh, wrote to me and said, uh, after and because of my speech, that there's a, a young student who uh, actually reached out for help. And so the educators uh, took that person in and now uh, are trying, uh, you know, the best that they can to, uh, to offer that help. But again, it, it's just, you know, w we as humans, we go through um, a lot of struggles, and, and, and men in particular, I believe, because uh, I'm speaking for myself. Uh, you know, I was taught to be strong. I was taught to be competitive. I was, I was taught not to uh, to show emotion growing up. Um, but then, when I started having problems, I was uh, I felt guilty and I felt ashamed to to ask for help. Uh, and it's only after many years of of, uh, of struggling that I did reach out for help, and I got the help that I needed. And uh, I, I'm uh, I'm I'm better today. And I think we have to address something that your critics would say, and, and this is not going to be a surprise to you, but people say, look, he was, he pled guilty to assault. I doubt his credibility. Is he serious on this issue? How did that play into your decision to get more involved, and what do you say to your critics? Well, I, I don't uh, pay attention to my critics anymore. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, uh, you know, 10 years ago when I was named to the Senate, 
Uh, I wanted things to move rapidly. I wanted to get things done, but unfortunately, that's not how it works. And I found out uh, uh, the rough way that uh, life doesn't work like that either. We have to be patient. We have to let things uh, unfold, and we have to work at things in order to to make changes. And so, you know, I look at all the indigenous peoples. I look at the the North Shore in, in Labrador, the suicides of indigenous peoples that took place there in Saskatchewan, and and. You know, every life matters, and uh, unfortunately, governments, um, you know, they offer uh, assistance and perhaps funding uh, after serious tragedies. But uh, what are we doing collectively as a society to to try and prevent a, as many of those tragedies uh, as possible before they actually occur? And so, this is what I'm trying to do. And um, as a matter of fact, I've uh, I've um, uh, I got involved with a, a new foundation in Montreal called the Aquarium Foundation, made up of uh, you know some of the best psychologists and psychiatrists uh, you know in Montreal and perhaps even in the country because uh, you know they want to help uh, you know with, with situations like these, but it's also a question of resources. And so I don't have all the answers, but I do have experience in this matter. You know, after I tried uh, unsuccessfully two suicide attempts, um, you know, I, I, I don't question myself anymore. I'm doing this because I care about people. And like I said, every life matters, but in particular, uh, First Nations lives matter. And uh, we have to take care of the most vulnerable citizens uh, in this country. And uh, it's, it's alarming to me that in the entire world, the highest rate of suicide are in our Arctic communities. We are in Canada. Uh, and why aren't we doing more to try and help these children? Because they need hope. And unfortunately, many of these children, First Nations, Indigenous children, are, are in remote areas where they can't access services. What would you like to see done in terms of providing hope, providing psychological and psychiatric services, and the kind of supports that these people, that these young people in particular, need, but more broadly that Indigenous Canadians need? When we're talking about Indigenous uh, kids and boys and men and indigenous peoples at large, uh, some, some of these people don't have access because they're in remote communities. Some, you know, some communities you have to fly in to, uh, to, to reach a particular community. And so what I would like to see, because I, I did introduce a motion in the Senate uh, for a Senate uh, committee to, um, to study issues of mental health and suicide prevention, uh, is to have the resources, the financial resources available and the resources on the ground and for people to have easy access to, to help if they need it. I've surrounded myself with people who are uh, a lot more experts than I am, but, uh, but uh, you know, I, I see this as, uh, as, my, uh, as a new calling for myself. Well, Senator Brazo, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, thank you. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. For The West Block, I'm Mercedes Stevenson. <music>